Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and today Apple released the Mac OS Ventura 13.5.1 update. In this video, we're going to go over everything that you're going to need to know about this update, and I'm going to walk you through a live demo of installing the update, and then we're going to talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs and whether it's safe or not to install on the latest version of Ventura. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Normally, Apple releases an update. They release associated updates for macOS Monterey and macOS Big Sur. But in this case, they did not. They only released macOS 13.5.1. On the iOS, iPad, AudioOS, tvOS, and watchOS, there was no public release today for any of those operating systems. Our demo Mac that we're using for the update today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air. If we want to be able to install the update, all we need to do is go into System Settings, and you can see that if it already checked for an update, you'll see a little red circle here with a 1. We'll click on Software Update is Available. And if you do not see this, you can go to general and then solve for update to be able to check for the update. And you should see Mac OS Ventura 13.5.1 in here. If you want to get a little bit more information about it, you can click on more info and it'll tell you all of the information in here. All we need to do is click on update now and then agree. And we'll type in our password here. Now we talked a little bit last time about how it takes a while to download and then it takes a while to do the preparing and all that stuff. Or you can go into automatic updates and then you can click on download new updates when available. So you can turn this on. So when it checks, it sees that 13.5.1 is there. It'll download it and then it will also prepare it in the background. All you need to do is when it comes up here and it says that it's available to install, you can click there and it'll restart automatically and you don't have to worry about the downloading or the extra time to do the preparing here. So I can save you a lot of time. I do this because I want you to see how long it takes to be able to download and do the preparing because I document those to see how each update goes. And for the download side, the 13.5.1 update on this M1 MacBook Air is 1.87 gigabytes coming from 13.5. Now, really quickly, I wanted to mention a couple of the comments in the last few videos have been, why is the update 11 gigabytes for unsupported Macs? And the reason why that is, is because the sealed snapshot of the operating system needs to be opened. And then the drivers that Apple took out have to be added back in. So when the software update goes to check that, it says, oh, wait, this sealed shot has been opened. We need the full update to be able to update this operating system. If you see 11 gigabytes here for the update for your unsupported Mac, that is totally normal. And I wanted to mention that again because I've been getting a lot of questions on that. Okay, the preparation is done and all we need to do is click on restart here. There it goes. And we'll be right back after the update finishes. Okay, we are back up after the update. Let's log in and we're back on our desktop. So let's take a look at our stats. Now, when we look at the 13.5.1, we updated from 13.5 to 13.5.1 and we started at 6.02 and finished at 6.06 and the preparation only took four minutes. So that was really fast. It did not take the 30 minutes that it suggested and the installing time only took five minutes. So for a total of preparing and installation, nine minutes. And if you look here, that's right on target with the previous update Updates, which is around eight minutes. We can see the larger updates take around 12 minutes or 13 minutes. So right on target. What is the build version of the 13.5.1? It updated to 22G90. There was no beta releases of 13.5.1 that was released to the beta track. And that is a normal situation where we're talking about the dot releases that one, two, or three. Usually we only see beta releases for 13.4, 5, or 6. How much space on Mac OS did the update take? I took a screenshot before we started the update and the Mac OS had 13.82 gigabytes that it was calculating for Mac OS and for the 13.5.1 update, 13.87. So only a five megabyte change. Apple did release a full installer of the 13.5.1 update and it is available as an install assistant package if you need to create a USB installer. And they also released a IPSW restore file for Apple Configurator 2 for Ventura 13.5.1. If you're wondering about Safari, Safari was not updated in the 13.5.1. It remains the same version as 13.5. If you have a 2018 to 2020 T2 Intel Mac, your Bridge OS version was also not updated. It was the same version as 13.5. If you have an M1 Mac, your system firmware was also not updated. It is the same version as 13.5. 
Now let's take a look at the security updates page for Apple. If we look here, Apple updated the security updates page today, and we can see here that there is no published CVEs or vulnerabilities that are patched in the 13.5 up update. And as you can see earlier in the week, watchOS 9.6 was released and it's in the same situation. It was only fixing operating system side issues and no vulnerabilities or CVEs were fixed. Now let's talk about what's new for enterprise. There was not any changes for enterprise in the 13.5.1 update, only in 13.5. And you're starting to notice a trend here. So let's get to the meat of it. What is new in this update? If we've talked about all these things that were the same, that's why I document all these changes. Now, when we go to the updates page for what's new in Mac OS Ventura, we see the root of it. Mac OS Ventura 13.5.1 fixes an issue in system settings that prevents location permissions from appearing. This was a big issue after the 13.5.1 update came out because users could not change the location permissions for anything that used location services. So let's take a look at that. I've got a screenshot here of what location services look like on a, a working system. So if you go into the system settings and then you go into location services, you should be able to turn on and off location services and individually turn on the apps that can have access to location services. So if you tried to go in there on 13.5, I'll show you what that looked like. This is what you would see. You would see location services and you can toggle it on and off, but you could not manage any of the applications that use location services. And the worst part was there was no binary or any kind of terminal command that you could run that would be able to manage those. Users who are stuck on 13.5, not being able to manage any of these location services controls. So Apple realized that and it was reported right away. And I'm glad that they came out with 13.5.1 to be able to fix the issue. Now let's take a look at those location services options in system settings after we install the 13.5.1 update. So we'll go into system settings and then we'll scroll down to privacy and security and then click on location services. And there's our location services. We can turn them on and off if needed to now. So it's a really great that that's all fixed up. Okay, now let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 benchmark scores. On 13.5, we had a 23.60 on the single core and an 85.90 on the multi-core. After installing 13.5.1, we got a 26.66, really close, and an 86.04, so right on target what we're looking for. Now let's talk about the 13.5.1 update on open core legacy patcher unsupported Macs. As you can see here, we have an early 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro as our demonstration Mac tier today. And we installed the 13.5.1 update and we are running the latest version of open core legacy patcher 0.6.8. We can see after clicking the post install root patch button here that we installed the patches today after the update on August 17, 2023 and all the patches are already installed. We can see that we have a transparent dock. Everything's looking good in the menu bar and everything is going good with the open core installation also. So no issues that I can see so far. The only thing I can notice is that in 13.5, there were some issues on the 2011s and the 8 combo 2 and 3 with Bluetooth. Uh, the word is that this is fixed and 0.6.9. So we'll take a look at that when that comes out. But other than that, everything's looking good on our unsupported Mac with Mac OS Ventura. I decided to run the Geekbench 6 score on our unsupported Mac to see how the benchmarks do on this. And on 13.5, we had 5.63 on the single core and an 18.03 on the multi-core. And after installing the 13.5.1 update, we got a 5.66 and an 18.66 right on target like our M1 MacBook Air. Do I recommend installing the 13.5.1 update? Now, this is an interesting question because there's no security fixes. So we don't have to worry about that. And if you didn't need the location services fix, you really don't need to worry about this update. Now, it's a little bit different if you did not install the 13.5 update. If you didn't install that, then you can install the 13.5.1 update because you will be receiving all of those security fixes in the 13.5 update. So in that case, if you're on 13.4 or 13.4.1, would recommend installing this because you get all the 13.5 security updates and you get the fix for location services. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.